than ever it's the unofficial 40 from soonerscoop.com now here's the entire sooner scoop crew carrie josh eddie and bob all right welcome back it is another edition of the unofficial 40 the world coming to an end edition of the unofficial 40 as we come to you on the precipice of the apocalypse uh Yes, that's right. The uh, Big 12 basketball tournament has been canceled. We don't know what's going to happen with the NCAA basketball tournament. OU football has canceled their media availability today. Uh, The university says that they will go to online schooling uh, for two weeks after the spring break period is over, which is next week. And we have so much stuff going on that it's hard to keep up with it with all the closures and the postponements and uh i know that it's gone so far as professional tennis has been canceled uh but obviously here locally in oklahoma city it all started last night when uh the utah jazz and oklahoma city thunder left the floor right as they're about to tip off and then it came out that rudy gobert had the coronavirus and uh it has been just mass this mass that because the NBA canceled their season and it's been a uh, it's been a snowball effect it's been uh, an avalanche of suspensions of closings and uh, I'm almost afraid to start this pod today because one we have Josh McQuistion who I don't know really how to describe what Josh's uh, last couple of weeks have been like He's been fighting with a lot of people on Twitter. Uh, God has stricken him with a disease. Talk to him, Josh. Let him know exactly how horrible you sound. I, I, and I said when you we came in earlier, I sound much better than I did on Monday. So if I've had the coronavirus, it passed in about 48 hours. So, you know, we're, we're doing fine. Um, no, but seriously, uh, but seriously you're right. Folks. I've been... No, no, I, I I've been into it with a lot of people, and I I still think there is this just panic that is not necessary. But I will say that talking to a lot of people on Twitter, and I acknowledge that on Twitter there were a lot of people that brought up the stresses on beds and just in general in the healthcare system, and there is some validity to some of that. I still well, here's think what, it's a little hysterical. Here is where you've got some people upset. Even I've had to field upset sure. text and stuff from people that are sure. mad at you. Sure. Uh, and they're, it, they're coming from people in the medical profession. And I think the one thing that we didn't see, it's like last night with what happened to the Thunder, like I was shocked like that people can just be given coronavirus tests uh, in Oklahoma because like it's not that easy to be tested for this stuff. Like that's the problem that we're running into in our country is if someone someone can't just go to the the clinic and get a coronavirus test to find out if they have it or not. It's just not an easy thing to do. It it feels like a movie. It feels like we are living in a outbreak some or... type of outbreak movie that nobody knows what the next step is. And I just it's it's been in pretty incredible over the last uh, boy. I'd say. By the way, we have stripped uh, Eduardo Nahardasevich of his name. He's Hello, Eddie. Hello, I'm here. I am here. Uh, Eduardo Nahardasevich has been uh, canceled. Yes, everybody has. Well, somewhat, but that's mostly because of Linda. <laughs> and my regards go out to her. Did you see that uh, Club Pro guy lost his? Uh, his, I think it was his superintendent. Hmm, I didn't see that. Yeah. Rest, rest in peace. He hasn't died yet, but they already had the uh, ceremony for him. Funny Twitter account if you uh, are into that. I would suggest you go look it up. Um, last night was insane. Yeah, I think that was crazy. That would probably be the best way to start it because sitting there, I was excited for a Thunder game, ready to dig in into that and a little bit of the Big 12 tournament, and then... Everything starts going south as far as the news, and uh, it it truly seemed like one of those events that everybody always talks about all the time on Twitter as far as, you know, 9-11, uh, 
uh, you know, the Boston bombing and the like the search that in, in, ensued after that, where you're basically refreshing and every new information is like taken to another level of like, like what the f- is happening here? Well, you had like, oh God, it's coronavirus. And oh God, it's a, well, it's as a player. Soon as, for- as soon as the teams went to the locker rooms, I think that's when everybody was like, is that what this what is, about? is going yeah. on? Well, and then the whole Donovan Mitchell thing that comes out today, and then there's pictures of uh, J.D. Reynolds' brother, uh, you know, and him with his arm around his son. Who's the head coach at Dell City. At Dell City. And Donovan Mitchell supposedly went there and got shots up yesterday, which I don't know how you make your way to Dell City if you're downtown. Maybe it's the closest and Del City's high school. I really don't know. In the I, but state tournament. So now they're going out there and playing. Who knows how many players that he, you know, he's been exposed OSAA to. OSAA has officially... Uh, postponed the state tournament in the state of Oklahoma, and that's on the heels of, I believe, the UIL postponing uh, Texas. I mean, we were talk- kind of talking about it before we got started, Carrie. but the crazy thing about all of this is, is it seems like if you're running a sports league right now or any type of sport or anything that really basically has people coming together, right? If you're the last one, you look bad now. If you're not, if you're not canning something, and I, 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 I think it to an extent that there has been a little bit of a. As soon as the NBA there, canceled, yeah, or just suspended, it was like the pressure on everyone to, air quote, do the right thing. Exactly started. Yeah, and I, it, like, it, do you care about your people? Do I, you I, care I, about humanity? Sure, I, and I, that's I think, and that's. That's just part of the society we live in today because you automatically get judged by the optics of what the guy next to you is doing. Like, if you're not as good as he is, then you're bad. Right. And so, I mean, and, and like, and it's, and like I said, I've rethought some of my stance on this. I get it. it it's a safe <laughs> precaution to take. I understand. I'm not bad. But you gotta realize, on though, Josh, I mean, like, like me, and I've, I've told you guys this time and time again, like, I'm not so worried about Rudy Gobert, you know, and I'm not worried about Donovan Mitchell. I'm not worried about I'm not even worried about Chris Paul or Steven Adams. Like those guys are gonna get it. It's gonna go through their system. They're gonna I'm not worried about a single OU football player or basketball player. But I am worried about, you know, people that have pre existing conditions that, you know, this ends up spreading. It becomes and it's already been declared a pandemic. I mean, it's 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 something that can affect other people and if we continue to operate the way that we have china has proven this italy has proven this if you don't take some drastic measures this can only continue to get worse because look how quickly it's spreading i mean yeah it's spreading to the nba this is the thing that just oh, not blew my mind but it, it it just it was a bad look the nba comes out and says we're not going to have fans in the stands because uh, we want to protect, you know, our players, and it's only going to be a you know a small amount of people that are going to be allowed in the arena. Uh, and it became this kind of like immediately the NBA put up this wall, like these are us, this is us, this is you. Like we're not, we don't want you coming into our space and disrupting us. Like that's how I felt when I saw that release. And then for one of their players to be the one that had the coronavirus and possibly put. The those you know the the us and the them the them in danger I guess is what I'm saying, like they just look dumb. And if they and Adam Silver to his credit canceled it immediately it was the per, you know exact right thing to it do. It was all so bizarre last night because that the Denver Dallas game is going on as right. they make the announcement. I actually flipped over in Oklahoma like, City. Are all the games? Is something going on with all the and games? That was, and then that I saw was, that Dallas and Denver were playing. I was like, oh, it's just Oklahoma City. Then. That was the first, that, I think that was the first clue when you realized, well, this game's not starting. And then my first thought was, do they always need permission to start a game in the NBA? And then you look and there's four other games going on. And it's like, oh, shit. And there was no is, like, well, we're down a referee. So the NBA has right, to. Right, right. Everybody was okay there. This. And what's even crazier is the fact that Donovan Mitchell, worth, you're literally seconds away from tipping the ball in Oklahoma City. Donovan Mitchell's in the starting lineup. He's on the and court. And he has coronavirus. And he has coronavirus. And not to mention the fact that you start looking at all the towns that Utah's been through, uh, the Jazz, over the last couple Did weeks. you see that thing about the charter plane? Like, they they were in a charter plane that ended up being used by Orlando and I don't somebody doubt it. else 
Like, well, think about the locker rooms that they've been in at Madison Square Garden that are also used by NHL teams. And the high schools they, they practiced in. They practiced in the it's same just, gym that the Thunder practiced in. I, I think we've reached a point, and I'm not saying that it's it's going to just be a widespread, like, because because you use something that they use, you're automatically going to die. But I do think, like, why would we not? We are at a point now, why would you not take action to prevent anything that could happen? Yeah, and I mean it. it it's a game. To it's me, it, sports. It comes down to, okay, I'm covering a team. If I get it and I I pass it on to my parents who are 70, like if they get sick and end up getting pneumonia and they die, like how could I ever forgive myself? Well, what about the elderly people that work at Chesapeake Arena that could have possibly yeah. come in contact? There's some you know, old all the people, that the work greeters there. that yeah. work down on the floor yeah. and the people that work at the uh, the check in when you come in and you have to have your all your bags checked right. and stuff. It's just. Those are it's not, not young worth people. it. Yeah. It's not worth it. But by the way, uh, Oklahoma has open spring football. <laughs> One practice in, and and just to and and for it to uh, be March twelfth in a time uh, during a week in which I think everybody is conditioned for the NCAA tournament right around the corner, conference tournaments, which is one of my favorite weeks of the year. It's just it's it's really it used to surreal. Be like Christmas when I was a kid. It's surreal that we are sitting here and there's no basketball being played. And it was going to be weird. Going to be no basketball for the foreseeable basketball. future. Oh I mean, yeah, it was going to be. I, I wasn't looking awkward. forward to it. No, uh, it, it, it's just the whole thing is 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 different. And I know it, it's it's particularly you know been weird up here for the last twelve hours. But I can't imagine that it's any different down in Houston where they canceled the rodeo. I talked to my sister yesterday. She volunteers on the uh, Houston Rodeo Committee, and, I mean, that is a huge yeah. deal for them to be that proactive and to cancel it at noon seems like uh, maybe a little bit bigger deal than I realized, Josh. Oh, guys, it's huge. I mean, that and that's something we were going to be there next Thursday. Um, so, I mean, we, we were uh, – we go every year at least once or twice. It is a it, – it's hard – I had never heard of it living in Oklahoma – Coming to Houston, like, I think if I still lived in Oklahoma, I would make a point to come down. It's a great event. I mean, they sell out the arena. There's a huge act every night, or, you know, depending on what you like, there's big acts every night. Yeah, Kings of Leon did that a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got the, um, you know, the rodeo itself going outside, a huge carnival. I mean, you're talking about, on I, I would guess on just about every day, at least 80,000 people in Houston walking and milling around in tight quarters. And, man, if a couple of people had it, I mean, within a week you're talking just massive spread. So I, I get why they did it, but, I mean, that I'm sure that was a very difficult decision. And to me, that's when the whole NCAA tournament thing started to happen because then Houston announced they were closing down all city functions or, you know, like they're above like 200 people or something like that. Well, Houston's supposed to host a regional. So, I mean, I, these things are all happening almost. It's it's just interesting watching everything balance itself out because one decision will be made by a city or a state and the other one's the governing body of that sport and trying to watch the two match each other kind of in a balancing act. It's just kind of, it's been one of the more interesting things to watch. Well, and here's the thing, because I, I want to say this almost for the sake of the board because, I mean, I've seen the state of the board before the show started today. It's a lot of fighting, and there are a lot of people out there uh, carnival barking, you know, trying to get attention over this deal, whether it's number of cases, number of deaths, how deadly it is, all that stuff, and all that fighting is going on the board. To me, there's two things here. One is, uh, for people like Josh that say it's the, you know, bleeping flu, like, the thing is, we have things to help cure the flu. There's nothing to help cure coronavirus yet. There's... I see all I get I get emails daily or not emails but texters I got one before the show started from uh, uh, one of my doomsday bunker buddies uh who's like they found the cure in Israel, in Israel like I didn't even read it but it's like if there was a cure then we wouldn't be freaking out like this if there was an easily easy cure for all these people that could go in and they would get better you can deal with it it's just odd but to people, me. Guys, people die from the flu, and but they ha, you know they have a way to help with that with influenza. They don't with corona with this COVID nineteen. The whole thing's just weird to me that we wouldn't want to take a just everybody take a deep breath. 
yep. not sporting for like two weeks well, is going to be thing. okay. And that's on the minimum side. That's the low side. I, I, it could be longer. We as a society, we just don't want to be inconvenienced. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. I mean, just in everything that we do, we don't want our food to take too long. We don't uh, want to wait in any, you know, in line. We want our, you know, checkout cashier. We don't want there to be an empty checkout where somebody's not in it because it's making us wait longer. Like, we just don't want to be inconvenienced, and this is very inconvenient. And I understand how people get upset, and I understand people were booing last night at the Thunder game, and I understand that people are on the message board saying this is bullshit. I, I want to watch spring football. It's not a deadly disease for these football players. It's not. I mean, it's just it's just not. But it is something that you have to do for the greater good. It just is. And I, I hope people will just accept that and say, hey, it's for the greater good. You're going to be inconvenienced, but this is the only way that we make it better and not worse. Agreed. I, I agree with that part entirely. Some of the rest of it, I'm just going to just stay out of. But, <laughs> um, it, it, yep, we have no immunity to flu either. I keep seeing people say, well, if we had immunity, you don't have immunity to flu. Yeah. You don't. No, the strain that's true. changes. And the thing I, the only thing I'll say, people, coronavirus isn't new. This isn't something that didn't exist. It didn't just appear. It's, it's just, just a different it's strain. Mutated. It's yeah. changed. Exactly. So, like, it just, I, I promise 90% of the people listening here are going to be perfectly fine whether they get it or whether they don't. Like, it's not, you might feel crappy, you might, but you're going to be okay. Like, that. that's the only thing I, like, it's Unless just a you panic. Die. Just, it just, yeah, I'm not, again, I have said it <laughs> everything I've said. Older people, people with pre-existing conditions, they have very real concerns, and I get it. And to me, that's why we're shutting down arenas. That's why we're doing these things. That's why Rivals isn't having a camp this weekend. Guys, me, Eddie, and 40 of our 17-year-old buddies are not going to die of the coronavirus in all likeliness, in all likelihood. We're, but it's what if one of them has yeah, it and we take it home and give it to a bunch of people who are at risk, that changes the conversation. That's a different thing. And that's something I admit I didn't think enough about in the beginning. But by and large, the people who listen to you know, the three, four of us shitheads talk about Oklahoma sports most of the time are not really in the danger demographic. I don't know, Josh. You don't sound like a man that could survive coronavirus right now. I will chew that up and spit it out. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I've told Tiffany, I was like, give it to me so I can just be done with this. I'm so tired. Oh, go of steal it from the oh, hospital. I'm, I'm sure the hospitals Seriously? already have vials of it ready to I, roll. I, I, I'm ready. They like, weaponized I, it. See, that's the thing that's uh, not sucks. There's a lot that sucks about this. But one of the things that sucks is because we're <laughs> doing all these smart things. This shit's going to drag on for months. Like, oh, there's been an outbreak in Phoenix. Oh, there's been an out Like, it's just going to keep kind of popping up here and there, popping up here and there. As to where if we just went into the crash, it's going to suck for about two months, and then everybody's going to just move on because, like, it's just going to run its course because there's nobody else left to infect because it's going to infect at that level of speed and burn through, you know, all of us. But... Again, it's not going to kill most of us, but I get why we can't do that. I understand it, but I'm just saying that's what's going to happen is we're going to get it under control, and then there's going to be another Rudy Gobert situation where somebody thinks it's funny and is wiping his hands on everything, and then 27 people in just, Duluth get you know contaminated. Just stop making it worse, you idiot, if we keep, Rudy if, Gobert. If, if we keep talking, and Josh is going to run out of talking points. They sent him in 45 minutes, so we'll be Isn't good. it amazing, Eddie, like how Josh cannot help himself? Like he's, I, I, He started the pod like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. And you just went 10 minutes talking about how it's not that big of a deal again. I, guys, You can't help I mean, yourself. Carrie, I, I feel like you are letting people around you work you into a frenzy. Like, I can tell you. I'm not. I'm just, well, maybe. You but, are. No, but. <laughs> I'm somewhere in between both of you, I think. I am yeah. not. I mean, both, I, it makes both me when anxious. When in the middle, we're all scared. It, I, w I it, will say, in 1665, the University of Cambridge temporarily <laughs> closed due to the bubonic plague. Are we going Isaac with Newton, Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton He came up again? with calculus and the theory of gravity during that time. 
So we got a lot to work on here during the self quarantine. Which space travel is that I will somebody say, coming up with space travel during I, this? I have been preparing for a self quarantine for so long. Like this is what I've wanted for forever. They can't shut down Postmates though, or I'm screwed. I was thinking about that last night as I ordered some Postmates. Like, should I be trusting this right now? No, but please do not shut down. <laughs> if, if you shut down, I'm I, I may die. Make some cooking classes and by cooking classes <laughs> i mean i'm coming home mom and dad i need food you know i mean th this whole thing it's like i i you guys know this i do not handle getting sick well like i it, it gets deep into my chest so i have been like not drinking eating good like i'm i'm preparing my body to to take on the coronavirus I'm going to just go ahead and say that I probably already have it. So I'm going to just power through. Get the f*** out of here. I'm, I'm going to just have to power through this one. I am getting a... It is weird that you're here because it's it's making me a little... Josh is right. I'm, I'm borderline hypochondriac. I think we all are, though, right now, just because of the... Or at least... And we kind of talked about it uh, this morning. I, I think everybody... It's okay to be a little scared. You don't have to not say that it, it's just like... I. What was the uh, somebody used? Uh, I think it was Kyle Brand or somebody from the NFL Network used the the term uh, uh, Corona Hardo or something like that. Yeah, it's uh -huh. like the guy that not you, Josh, but the guy that is like He's definitely. It, it, it's to, just the goddamn flu. Go to Facebook. It's cold. There, Corona cold. Hardos are everywhere. Oh my gosh! Facebook yeah. is like the worst possible place to visit right now. It's nothing but people with memes. About how coronavirus ain't shit. That's all. That's all my Facebook is right now. And, and I get that everybody's like, "Well, Josh said that last week." Let's not forget I Things had a have qualifier. Changed. There are two groups that are. It's absolutely not just that for them. Like I get it. Like that's super dangerous for certain people. Like that's and that's okay. Like that's fine. And that's why we're taking all these precautions. And guys, it's freaking sports. Like you're you're gonna survive. Don't get me wrong. I don't know what to do with myself. Like it's spring break, the girls are out of school. Like there, there is all this stuff that should be fun, and this week has now just gone weird. I, I tweeted it last night. Are you convinced they don't like it? I did not wake up on March 11th thinking this is going to be a day I'm going to remember for the rest of my life, and I don't know if it's going to be March 11th or 12th with the way things have played. But this has been an insane. 24 hours yeah. by the way i i have never identified more with the people that get mad at me and eddie like i wish you just talk sports on the pod because like when people start making like i saw like kevin noon or ohio state publisher oh boy uh with a you know a, a bottle of a picture of him with a bottle of corona he's like hey tim look i found the coronavirus <laughs> and i was like so triggered and just like you <laughs> jackass like this is not a time for jokes and bad jokes. I think it's at a time that. for equal jokes and equal uh, respect. You need to situation. make light of it, but you can make light can of make it. Light but you also of have it. to be respectful. That I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Stupid, dumbass meme jokes are disrespectful not only to society but to humor. Leave them up to the Vin Dog, okay? <laughs> Vin dog. Leave leave the meme wars up to the Vin Dog. Memes you. Here we'll 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 slowly but surely work our way into uh, how this affects everything Can around you keep a meme Oklahoma category? football. Mm, no, not really. They're all kind of spur of the moment, so I don't really have a whole lot of meme. I don't really I just use iPhone. I think it's kind of olds of me, but I don't really get into the memes that much. I don't. But his, don't he doesn't many. use like animated gifs though, right? He's just he's got oh, yeah. like he uses impact animated. font. Oh, he uses animated oh, gifs. Oh, that's right, because the sure. flushing one. Oh, yeah. and the he has yeah. one. He has one out this morning as of a guy of a fly. He's chasing him around with a fly swatter. It's pretty funny. If you don't know what we're talking about, this is a guy that uh, Dave Portnoy unleashes on the world <laughs> whenever he wants. Who's he? What was his? The Vin Dog. What was he going after last time? Uh, it was one of the uh, NASCAR people. Okay, I think. Whoever Barstool's fighting with this week. If you have a chance, go watch the documentary on it's him, though. It's hilarious. Pretty gosh his, darn his funny. His sons that are just embarrassed. It's pretty goddamn Solomon. funny, if I will quote Alex <laughs> Grinch. Josh, do we want to start, though? We can start with recruiting, or do we want to start with the team side? Because I was going to ask you how this is affecting 
everything that's going into the spring recruiting what, period. Let's do this. Uh, we uh, had a chance to catch up with Lincoln Riley this week, uh, and this was before the NBA thing happened. Uh, and just to kind of his thoughts on this was on Monday and what his main concerns then were about the coronavirus and the situation going on. No, I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to protect our guys right now, you know, more than anything. And so our biggest, our immediate focus is, is spring break, you know, where these guys are traveling, kind of like we discussed the right. other day. So that's kind of been, even in the last week, kind of a constant um, it's, it's changed quite a bit in the last week. So mm-hmm. trying to just educate those guys and, you know, make sure that they're safe during that time. So that's the main focus right now. And this, I think, is the mo- more important thing because it was thrown out there. It was kind of like it had been bandied around a little bit about, oh, you may be going to online classes and what that might mean if school closed down for football and spring practice and things like that. And again, this was before all hell broke loose. Uh, but if you want to know, now I guess I should start this by saying OU has not made anything official at this point as we're recording it. The only uh, thing that we know right now 12. is twelve fifty on Thursday. We were supposed to have availability this afternoon with players. We haven't had players yet because they only opened on Tuesday, and then we were supposed to be able to uh, come do our annual photo video, photo video yeah. for the first twenty twenty five minutes of practice, and that has been canceled. And we don't know if practice has been canceled. Uh, or what it will, but we do know after spring break they will do online classes only. And I think it was Jason Kersey on the starts this question with uh, Lincoln Riley asking if that would affect the football team. If OU was to go to online classes or whatever after spring break, would that would you guys not be able to practice? I mean, how would that work? Uh, that'd be a decision the university would have to make. I think there's a couple options on the table. One is you know not having classes, but you know, some events like this or controlled environments like we can create here um, mm-hmm. potentially allow you to be able to still get work in. Um, and then the other option is closing it completely. So we'll have to adjust. Might have to pull out a out of the old uh, 2015 spring playbook, okay. right? And uh, have a have a middle or a couple week break in the middle and find a way to make it work. So uh, we'll be ready to adjust. Now, uh, OU sent out a, a memo to students. It was titled Dear Students, Faculty, Staff, uh, and parents, and uh, one of the students at OU sent me this. That's one of our producers up at the radio station, and this was kind of interesting. He said, "All this is related to sports." Said, "All university related events scheduled to occur between March 14th through April 5th are suspended, with the possible exception of sporting events, which may be subject to spectator restrictions, meaning you know fans in the stands." Uh, it said, "This includes, but is not limited to, recruitment events." Tours, student programs, reunions, performances, conferences, and social events. We will continue to to evaluate event hosting and will issue an announcement regarding events slated for April 6th and beyond. Uh, So that is clearly talking about anything, any games, any spring games, anything like that. They they basically, when that came out this morning, they're basically telling we haven't made a decision on canceling anything past April 6th, and which it, would include the spring game. It would seem that those decisions or the discu- those discussions, rather, are still ongoing as we uh, we continue to wait to hear something formally from Oklahoma as far as athletics go uh, in their plan. But we have heard from uh, Texas, we've heard from Texas Tech, and we've heard from TCU, TCU. that all of their home uh, sporting events will be closed to the public, which... You know, it's really not that big of a deal right now on March 12th, but you look at the long-term uh, schedule or the, the, I guess, at the end of the month with Oklahoma baseball supposed to go down to Fort Worth and play March 27th and 29th. Um, then, obviously, with spring the spring game, I know Ohio State's already, uh, they've already canceled theirs, haven't they? It's just right, a straight-out yeah. straight cancellation. Michigan, yeah. uh, that, I think that was a week before Oklahoma's on April 11th. So, uh, you know, I would imagine... Uh, we hear something from the Big 12 or we hear something from uh, Oklahoma, maybe even by the end of this podcast. And there were a lot of schools that just flat out said uh, we're going to suspend all recruiting activities uh, until a certain age. I think it was uh, March 30th or something like that. But uh, uh, is there been, Josh, I mean, in terms of recruiting, have you had any uh, feelers from kids that you know might you know, were scheduled to come to practice that might be coming to practice or to 
to campus that you know have said okay they they told me that's not happening yet or anything like that well you know bob uh, had a chance to speak a little bit earlier with colin oliver and he was expected to be uh the, sorry the 2021 linebacker from edmund santa fe um guy that doesn't have an offer and really i i think he had some hope that he was going to come down today take a visit and maybe pick up that offer maybe make that happen and was clearly clearly disappointed when it didn't happen, and it sounds like Oklahoma just kind of said that that's just not a risk. You know, you should take, we should take. We're just gonna, you know, kind of close this down to everybody. And then about almost the time we went on air, actually, uh, Nathan Rollins Kabonge, the defensive end that we talked about last week from Portland Jefferson, uh, announced that he's not going to be taking the his official visit on April 18th. So I don't know how far this thing goes, and I. You also have to wonder if Kabonga is a little bit of an interesting situation because of the fact that he's from the Portland area and there's so much going on up in, nor- in the Northwest right now that if maybe Oklahoma kind of specifically said, hey, we've got to be careful there and we'll kind of revisit at a later date. But there is, there's no question that there are steps being taken to kind of slow this thing down and see kind of see where things are going to go. I, my guess is that they have pretty much already laid out the rest of this month, there's not going to be any more visits like that. They're going to go on the same plan that a lot of these schools have announced. I think the, a lot of SEC schools came out with this. We're going to wait until the end of March and then kind of reevaluate. And I, that's my guess as to how far Oklahoma has gone privately. I have not heard anything publicly yet, but we'll, we'll have to kind of see how that plays out. And again, don't be surprised if it goes longer. Like Eddie was saying earlier, you're, they're going to be as cautious as they need to be with this thing. I would also add that the SEC just announced that uh, on and off campus recruiting has been suspended through March 30th. For I knew all that teams. They, yeah, I knew that they had, they had canceled uh, events. I hadn't seen anything about uh, the recruitment of players. So that is a uh, kind of a new wrinkle. And I would expect, basically just to put it bluntly, I think sports is going to be canceled uh, for the foreseeable future. Anything that has to do with sports. Yeah, and I think I think the SEC falling is good uh, because that kind of I I think everyone would they they probably first thought was well let's see if the SEC cancels any of their recruiting stuff and once they have I think it lets everybody kind of have their let their guard down a little bit so I you know the Big Twelve has strangely been slow to, I mean they that's strange well that's strange but <laughs> that's right on brand is what that uh, is they've been very slow to react they've, they've kind of been last in line to go ahead and pull the trigger and say okay we're out of here I, you know no statement from the ACC yet but Duke has just Duke announced that they, that they are canceling suspending all, everything yeah, yeah all sports for the foreseeable future I think is yeah, how they termed it yep so um like OU I mean this is obviously not something that Lincoln Riley wants because. Uh, they have built their entire recruiting calendar, Josh, around uh, the spring game and making that the jumping-off point for their next recruiting class. So uh, I could even see it being a thing where maybe they come back and pre- – I mean, I'm trying to think of the – so they have the two weeks. Let's say they are off the next three weeks. How many how many days does that give them before the spring game then? Like about – Three weeks from today? Eight, 17 days well, or something? Three, three weeks from today would be – April second, so that would give them that would give them days. a full two weeks of practices. I if, well, really three weeks of practices almost. If, we're if they wanted down, to play the spring game and then have practices after it, yeah, I, I don't know. But that's a that the other thing is is I I know that they've gone to online schools uh, for the two weeks after spring break. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I right now if if I had to. Make a make a blanket statement on what's going to happen. I think they'll cancel the spring game. No, yep, I agree. And here's the thing that you know is the clincher. It's just like last night. If you find out that one of just one, just one of your players has the coronavirus, you can't continue. No, no. I mean that they're already going to probably for preventative measures going to have to go through the entire. I don't know how you do a college campus, but I mean the football facility, everything up there is going to have to be wiped down. wiped down and cleaned. I mean, I I guess there's really no other way to say it. It's it's truly unprecedented and 
It's a monumental undertaking. In yeah. a way, I, I I don't know other, any other way to say it. It's just truly feels like a movie. I, I know that I said that at the beginning, but it there's nowhere else to turn. I mean, sports is going to be taking the back seat for a long time. I would say at least a month. I mean, I, I think a month is probably a given. How much longer after that? And I said at least. Does yeah. it does it bleed into the football season? Like that's how long term I'm thinking. That's I, I was going to say something, Eddie. Like if there's any positive that again, most of the listeners here are going to take who are largely football fans. At least it's come on now where there's a chance they can get their ducks in order before the football season begins. There's a chance this has no real impact on the football season. The uh, Eagles shut down their football facility. OU announced. has officially, uh, it's Kendall Rogers from D1 Baseball is reporting that the OU Cal Poly series has been banged for this weekend. Been what? Banged. Canceled. Okay. Postponed. Hit. Your young person vernacular escaped me there for a second. Hold up a tick, Eddie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it could come at any time. By the time we post this pod, you know, you could find out that everything's been canceled. It's just, it, that's how things are going. Everything is going quickly. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, in the meantime, and nobody has an answer to this. Like, is there any way that the NCAA basketball tournament is played at this point? No. None. I, without a doubt, and literally 15 hours ago, I would have said you're crazy. That because it seemed like they to even to even think that it could be canceled, and it seemed like they were fighting tooth and nail to make sure that didn't happen. Yeah, D guys, do you think? I mean, and I, I think I know the answer to this, but did Rudy Gobert just change everything? Because I, I, you said it early, Carrie. Like they were looking at like, well, the only people that could make anybody sick is if the fans get the players sick. It was like it never crossed anybody's mind that the players could come into that arena carrying something and spread it amongst themselves. Yeah, and we're finding out the players are the more likely ones to have it. Apparently. Which, I, I, I guess in a way, makes sense with as much travel as those guys do. Well, that's like, what they're I'm already saying. susceptible, it's like, right? I'm watching ESPN last night, and they're talking about, uh, oh, you know, these players, they're all, their schedules are so regimented, and uh, everything they do is monitored. Like, yeah, but they do a whole lot of shit. Like, I sit at home... I wake up and I do a radio show, uh, and then I catch up on Sports Center, and maybe I have to go to practice at night. Like I barely leave my house. I'm not going flying from city to city, hotel to hotel, arena to arena. Like I'm not. I, they literally are coming into contact with hundreds of people a day. I'm lucky if I come in contact with anybody <laughs> from day to day. Yeah, no, I see it, about three people a day. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous how much more mobile, how much more social those people are than just about anybody else on the planet. It doesn't surprise me. Like, if anybody's going to get it, it would be them. Yeah. By the way, that was... And I would also add that I think it's going to get a lot worse here over the next week than... I think it's going to get better now that they're doing this. It might, and it now might, that everybody it might. is... I think everybody's pretty pretty locked in. Like, there's nobody. What's crazy to me it, it, to wrap my head around is the fact that I don't think there's anybody in the world right now that isn't aware of coronavirus. No, no. The world. Like, I can't think of a time that there's ever been a world event like this. There's been a lot of United States events. There's yeah, been like a we lot never of had, European like, events. There's been talk about bird flu. There was mad cow disease. But it's not like it was something that gripped the entire world. Like This is like if the Super Bowl and the World Cup happened on the same day on the same field. And they played each other. Yes, like the <laughs> champions played each other or something. That's the only, it's the only thing that's that engrossing to such a huge part of the population. It's like if they had a, a super tournament between the best football team, the best football team, and the best rugby team. All in the same place. Well, we know who'd win that one there, <laughs> Carrie. We'd beat those pussies' asses. <laughs> well, now it feels a little more normal, doesn't it, everybody? Uh, we, got, we we can't get into some team you, stuff, I guess. Yeah, you want to talk yeah. about some of yeah. what we yeah. talked about this week? Uh, it, I thought one of the interesting discussions uh, that we had was with Alex Grinch, who we talked to on Monday. 
And I hit him up just kind of about, hey, yeah, a lot of jobs came open during the offseason. A lot of people were worried that you might uh, you might step out after just a year. Uh, and, you know, Lincoln Riley made it very clear. Like, look, when I got here, Bob Stoops did everything he could to make sure uh, that, you know, I was taken care of and that if I was going to leave, it was going to be for the best. You know, it had to be for a great job. Uh, and it turned out Bob stepped down before that great job came calling. And uh, Alex Grinch is now in the same way. And before we hear from Alex Grinch, I want to remind you guys, uh, midfirst.com, you're going to be at home a lot. You're going to be online shopping. You need a credit card for that shit, man. Uh, so go to midfirst.com slash U40. I think it's the first time I've ever used a cuss word to read. Uh, go to midfirst.com slash U40, midfirst.com slash U40, and sign up for the OU Rewards credit card. Uh, you can uh, get 0% financing for the first 12 months on that. A lot of great rewards available in that program. You can redeem it uh, for all kinds of things. So just go to midfirst.com slash U40. Uh, that's midfirst.com slash U40. Check it all out. It's right there on the website. And uh, it's the exclusive provider of the uh, OU Rewards credit card. And it's got the OU on it. So I know you won't be out and about as much at restaurants and things like that. But when all this is uh, behind us, Whip that bad boy out and show everybody what a big OU fan you are. So, uh, thanks to MidFirst.com uh, or MidFirst Bank for uh, being a huge sponsor, our title sponsor, of the Unofficial 40 Podcast. So, talk to Alex Grinch about all that stuff uh, and uh, being able to overlook certain jobs and stay at Oklahoma. Here's what he had to say. So much positive going on here, and, and, and you know, like to think that we've contributed to it as a defensive staff. Certainly, to a point, we're, we're pleased with the progress we made. We're awfully frustrated and uh, pissed off at some of the, the results that we got last year, but but that doesn't dismiss you know the again you know the the, the progress that we made. But I also think you know we're just getting started. I, I, I really do, and so um, you know, and, and I use the term "we're not even good yet." We we'll just wait till we get good. Now, again, it's our job to get that done. Um, but but uh, you know you're you're working for the, the the best coach in college football, and then tell me I'm wrong. You know, and then his first three three years as a head coach to, you know, and I, and, and I I've, I've used this with guys. I mean, you know, we don't want to focus on the losses obviously, but to lose six games in three years, and you got other programs losing five games a year. You know, I'm gonna, 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 gonna talk about how good they're doing, type of thing. And, and you know, we're playing at an elite level. The expectations are extremely high. You know, that's what that's what you sign up for, for OU football. Um, so, um, in any event, uh, no, th- it, 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 it's all told. It, it's family. It's 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 staff. It's players. It's expectations. It's it's, it's what you want to be a part of. Um, and, and very very blessed that, that Oklahoma provides all that. And you know, it's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, there is a lot to unpack there. Some uh, shots at Sam Ellinger uh, in there as well, or Elinger, as Eddie likes to call him. Uh, one thing, Eddie, I don't know. You were standing there. I almost kind of what he didn't say. What I felt was, I can't leave here after just a year of doing this. Like that would be a shitty thing to do. Maybe I. It of course he like- didn't get offered the USC job. He. He didn't. I don't know if he got offered any jobs, but it wasn't like he was. I guess there's two ways to look at great it. Great job offers. One one way would be to look at it that he was probably one of the hottest names in the country in the off season carousel, mm-hmm. and the other side of it is probably that was probably inflated a little bit, don't you think? Yeah. Just as far as like other schools' interest in him, and that's well, not, I'm not. I'm not job, trying to take a shot Washington at him. The Washington State job got filled pretty fast by the sure. Hawaii guy. I sure. mean, that was clearly their guy. And then the UCLA was just a dumpster fire. And so his name eventually popped into there, even though it was thrown in there, I think, by OU fans pretty early. But I I would be shocked if he even interviewed at all for that UCLA job. That must UCLA? Have, or the, uh, I'm thinking of Carl Durrell, uh, the, the Colorado oh, job. Oh, Colorado. Yeah. yeah it, it, I don't know. It, and that's pro- we'll probably... By the way, what, really ne- what search firm... Does Carl Durrell owe his career to somebody good? He might have a lot of like the, weed hookups in uh, Boulder that maybe paid him off or something. That's just such a weird hire. I, it's it's maybe the worst hire. That probably tells you more about where the Pac-12 in Colorado is than it does where Carl Durrell is or Durrell, whatever his name is. Carl Durrell, yeah. I. It's it's kind of sad what's happened to the Colorado football program, but I do think that I think Alex Grinch. 
in a way, and maybe this is just a complete homer way to look at it, but I think he looks at Oklahoma. He looks at, you know, around the country at the rest of the jobs out there. And you build, if you can turn this thing around, if you can go win a national championship uh, or, or drastically turn this defense around, I think all of a sudden that window of opportunity really opens up even further than what it already is. Don't you think, Josh? Oh, absolutely. You know, and I, and you got my, I, I got to say, I got hung up on a different part of this thing when, when he makes the comment about the five losses and you'd kind of made a joke about, oh, that, that could be, you know, or that's got to be a little shot at Texas. Man, you look at UT and A&M, you could put that hat on either program. That sure. Homeless recruiting against all the time. Absolutely. But I love that he, because I don't remember him doing that last year. Like I don't really remember. Like it's like he's kind of he did getting seem, in on it. He did seem more. Co- he did seem more comfortable. I think is probably oh, yeah. the best way to I say agree, it. Yeah, yeah. I I just I was like, oh, you know, like it almost feels like, oh yeah, he he's part of the the gang over there now. Like I mean, he gets it. Like they kind of you're going to have to throw a few jabs every once in a while because they do. They have to fight this constant battle of just garbage on the recruiting trail, and it doesn't <laughs> seem to matter what a few programs do they just get these players that they frankly just don't have any business getting well i will say one thing that uh you can do uh, or you can bring up with alex grinch that will take you back to the alex grinch from a year ago the guy that would never say that he had a backup safety that he could play uh is ask him about filling the holes of neville gallimore uh q overton because uh Eddie, was it you that asked, or was it, it was Bob that asked Bob about did. Jordan Kelly? Mm-hmm. And that was vintage Alex Grinch right there. Well, and, and not close enough, and, and, and that, that's just the reality of it. It doesn't mean he doesn't have the ability to do it or he's not going to have the opportunity to do it. But, you know, I, I'll, I'll say this. The guys that contributed last year uh, were, were the guys that, that we felt could contribute last year. And believe me, we wanted more guys to, to, to contribute. So if you, didn't, if you didn't see their name in the stat book or you didn't see them go in the game, there's a reason that, that, uh, that they didn't. And in and, and not all, all cases was it health-related. And so, uh, you know, Jordan Kelly, all, all those guys up front, Laurent Stokes has to be a better playmaker for us. I love LeBron. He did, did a real nice job. Glad, glad we had him. But, but we're, we're, I need, I, we, we need production. You know, and that, that's, again, that's not being negative, that's being real, and he would tell you the exact same thing, you know. And so all those guys in the middle, they, 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 they certainly do uh, have to produce more, and, and, and that includes everybody on our defense. But, uh, no, they got to step up. Uh, yeah, he's, he doesn't sugarcoat it when it comes to if you're, if you're playing well, practicing well, and you can play, he'll say it. And, and, uh, you know, if, like, if you ever – we've said this before. If you have a question about why insert player isn't uh, playing, isn't playing more, yeah. it's because they don't trust him. It's because he's not getting it done on Monday through Thursday. Right. End of story. There isn't some and, kind of doghouse. There isn't like some kind of, well, he, they don't like how he works out during the summer. And you should know by watching the Peach Bowl that Justin Broyles wasn't getting it done Monday through Thursday, and he didn't get it done on Saturday either. It makes sense. Or whatever day that it was. Make, I forget. It was a m- well, Monday or what? I think two. it was a Monday. And guys, do you think for him so it's more... Out. Do you, do you think it's more, um, you know, understanding the defense, doing, you know, knowing all the reads, all the checks, that kind of stuff, or do you think it's more effort given? Are you giving me everything? I think you've it's got? all of it. It's all of it. Really? Okay. Yeah. I, I I thought maybe he tipped one direction more than the other. I just feel like if if Alex Grinch or anybody on that defensive staff feels like you can help them in any way, they're going to give you every opportunity. And it kind of goes back to what we've always said about these coaches and the and that they didn't sign up to not win and they don't they don't they don't want to play just one person at every position they want to rotate people it's like remember early last year they were rotating in for kenneth murray and we were like what the hell are you doing like why are you taking kenneth murray out of the game on the third series of the game like what's wrong with you like who does that and they're like well we want to rotate people like they want to play as many people as possible I don't know how many times we can say that on the pod. Just a small side note. Duke and Kansas have both withdrawn themselves from the NCAA tournament by the actions of their athletic departments. Kind of crazy. I would imagine that the NCAA that tournament That is such a bullshit would be just thing to a ride do. around the corner. They know there's not going to be an NCAA. So now they want credit 
Like when that, is that when not the hammer most, comes down, they're going to be like, oh, most, no, we, we pulled out of the NCAA tournament last year. It's the most Coach K thing of all time. Oh, my God. That cannot stand. So stupid. That cannot and stand. And I'm, I'm saying it with a smile because it's such bullshit. Uh, I, I will tell you one person that Alex Grinch loves because every time he talks about him, it's like, it's like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't really know how to explain it. He just lights up. And that's Trey Norwood. And Trey Norwood, uh, I asked uh, exactly, I don't know if my question's on here. I don't think it is. I asked uh, kind of where he was physically heading into this game. He had a lot to say about Trey Norwood. Yeah, so he's six months, and it's one of those things you're cleared. You know, what's that? You know, cleared to, to be an elite football player, or cleared to, to participate. And so he's out there with us, which is great. It's, it's great to have him back out there. You know, he was one of those guys that, uh, you know, we had four, uh, you know, four you know, would be you know, starters at this point last year, four starters that had ACLs last year. You know, a lot of people that, that, that you know, go across the season, they talk about all the injuries that we have. We didn't really have those conversations, and, and, and we absorbed a lot of those. We had five ACLs as a defense last year, and he's one of them. But he's one of those guys that, you know, six months post up and, and it did, did a, a tremendous job in the offseason. He did a tremendous job last year just, just you know, trying to be a leader in every, every way. It was in every meeting, every, you know, things he didn't need to be at as an injured guy, non-travel, some of those things. And, and so I commend him on that. did everything in the right way. Uh, from that standpoint, and, and so exciting to get back out there. And, and he was kind of a Swiss Army knife for us last year in, in the spring, nickel, safety, corner, all those things. And so we'll kind of see how it, it, it plays out. But we got to be smart with him, too. You, again, you just don't say you're cleared and you know, take 100 reps a day and, and all those things. So, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it'll be a big spring for him, but, but really we got to be smart as, as we move. But it's great having him. Alex. And I know we we I wanted to bring this up because I, I was going to say something over that last uh, saying about you know, guys making a difference in the middle. You mentioned LeRon Stokes. Uh, it was just one day in helmets and in in t shirts and shorts. So there wasn't a whole lot to say about Perry on Winfrey. If anybody's like, well, what do you say about Perry on Winfrey? No, he, he didn't say anything. It does seem like it. And Josh, I might be completely reading this situation wrong. And I know that Bob would agree. We've talked about it uh, just between the two of us. But it would seem that. Oh, you hitting on Perry on Winfrey and Joshua Ellison almost seems a little integral to the success of the defense next season. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. I was talking to somebody earlier this week and was just kind of having a conversation, kind of, you know, joking around like, so who's going to surprise everybody this spring? Who, who's going to be that guy? And I didn't really get an answer of, oh, be ready for this guy. It was Oklahoma really needs... Winfrey and maybe Ellison as well to be really good. They they don't have, they're not going to have that learning curve that we've seen with some other JUCO guys in the past. They need those two guys to either be starters or heavy rotational guys from day one. I mean, they they need them to be that good. Now, the good news is they were both really highly recruited guys, so there's reason to think they can be those guys. And I heard good reviews. Um, you know kind of through the the workouts and stuff they were you know just not so much that it you know you want to take any of that stuff too seriously but just that there was um you know they were impressive they they were doing some of the right things and that, so i think there's hope but i don't think there's any question if that if that defense is going to take another step forward they need at least one of those guys and i would say that's probably winfrey of those two to really be you know that guy you start having a conversation about, like, that that's another NFL defensive lineman kind of guy. I would also add that we saw Nick Benito yesterday at Pro Day, which we'll get into, but uh, he has a wrap on his right hand. It looks like a thumb issue yeah. uh, with him. Maybe he got it cleaned up. I, I really, I'm not here to report on what happened, but um, that explains. Actually, you are here for that. Well, I don't know what happened. Why don't you just do like everybody else? So you pretend. brought it up. Well, I'm just passing along. That's you saw why that he had his thumb wrapped up. I mean, that's, that's enough. That's, that's the report. That's why he uh, stop there. That's don't, why. Don't, okay. Don't don't don't. Well, edit all up. Sell edit, yourself. Edit, edit no, up. I'm not editing shit. That takes I'm too long. Kidding. That explains his absence, though. There. See, you reported in the story. <laughs> How was Jason Garrett yesterday? I just kept staring at was him he? and Demarco talking. Yeah, they thinking like, a lot, what are they, they talking about? You think they're talking shit on Jerry? They had to have been. <laughs> they had to have been. Because DeMarco didn't get money from him, 
and uh, Garrett didn't get the quarterback. You know, but he did locked up. get to have a job for 10 years, so I guess he yeah, can't no be too happy. Can't be too mad. Both of them made plenty of money from Jerry. Right. Jerry's got money. Hey, DeMarco didn't DeMarco didn't get any money, and Dak Prescott's going to be you know the richest quarterback in NFL No, he's not. I mean, he's going to get franchised. By the way, what do you guys think of when you hear people make a Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts comparison at quarterback? Oh, in a way, isn't it just kind of? I don't think it's awful. Would you say? I mean, as much as I'm not, I'm a I'm a Cowboys fan. As much as I would rather have a different quarterback than Dak Prescott, I think Dak Prescott's a lot more of an accurate passer than Jalen Hurts. I think there's some truth in that, Kerry, but I think he developed that over time. Like, I never thought of him at Mississippi State as a game-changing passer. I thought he was dynamic because I didn't either. He played a game very similar to what Jalen Hurts did. Is um, the are, are Jalen? Do you think Jalen Hurts' inaccuracies as a thrower overblown a little bit? I don't know that I have the biggest issue with inaccuracy. Yeah, I, 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 I think I know where you're going, I, Josh. I, I, I think I that think... Iowa State game was really the only game this year where I was just like, boy, he just flat out sucked throwing the ball down the field. Sure. Yeah, he was just missing guys. Yeah, I, I, I think that's fair. Because, um, I mean, like, I, I think some of it is we watched Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray for four years. Like, that's going to skew the way it looks. when it, Most guys can't throw like that, and that's okay. Like, there's plenty of good NFL quarterbacks that don't complete it at the level those guys did in college. My problem with Jalen Hurts has almost always been decision making. He exactly. just does right. things I can't explain or diagnosing I don't, defenses. Like his, yes, I, I'm ball, I mean, and ball security like that was a oh, huge yeah. problem for him this year. We've gone on it and time and time that again. Doesn't get talked about. Absolutely, we we've talked about this, Josh, time and time again on this podcast. As far as it, it's not, it, it was incredible to me to be in Atlanta at the Peach Bowl covering the game. And I we talked to I talked to Chris Plank and uh, Gabe yesterday about this on uh, their XM show. The idea that Jalen Hurts carried Oklahoma into the college football playoffs yeah. is just insane to me. That a it tells me nobody watched the games, and b it just kind of created well, that was this. Jim Mora Jr. I mean, but there was a lot more than Jim Mora Jr. saying stuff like that. And he was the main idiot. Even but so, you're right? People, yeah, people made it out like he. He was the reason Oklahoma was there. Oh, and not to mention, do you see what do you see what Gottlieb said yesterday Mm-mm. on his uh, national show? As far oh, as about how people didn't like people him. didn't like him, I wouldn't say that that was entirely accurate. You kind of hinted that you felt that that there was something to that throughout the year. I wouldn't Gottlieb say that that's it. crazy either. Though. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. I I wouldn't just completely say he was hated by everybody in that locker room, but I've talked to enough people that. In a way, I think that there was some. It was it was always awkward. Jalen was his. It was own, always. I mean, they awkward. talk about you know players and having their own brand and stuff. Like Jalen was certainly Jalen. Like I don't think Jalen was one of the boys. Like Jalen was like I'm Jalen Hurts. Like I'm a pretty big deal. Like I think he carried himself that way. I think, I think it rubbed some people the wrong hey, way. And to Eddie's credit. That that was what Eddie had said he had a beef with. Like, he was kind of walked in a room like, I'll take you guys to the playoffs now. Like I'll He go patted ahead everybody on the head. Remember, the, he, remember after the KU game? And it, that's kind of where this started. It was after the KU game, and people asked him about, you know, hey, what do you think about playing in your first OU Texas Red, game? OU Texas game. He's like, I played in the Iron Bar. I don't think it'll be okay. And then he promptly goes out and almost gives the game away. Yeah, he, his turnovers. He, he patted everybody Shit, on the head, and it was... It was it was awkward. It was strange, but then again, <laughs> I still think it's probably it was probably a good thing for somebody like Spencer Rattler to go through, just to be around him, learn from him, not to be thrown into that situation. It is you know what's what's strange is I asked Lincoln a question the other day about how you know how big an advantage of it is is for you to you've had two back to back quarterbacks go number one. And then you have Jay, like how much of an advantage is it for these guys to have you as a coach preparing for their pro day? And he the first thing he said was, Yeah, it's you know, it's interesting. Three guys with three very different personalities. Like which almost to me, like, if you have like Kyler is very good, he's to himself. Baker's very good, but he's very he's he's an extrovert. 
Like, what? How weird is Jalen Hurts? Is what I thought. Like, I just don't think he's very uh, open in a way. Yeah. I don't know. I I'll tell you this. I think that whoever it be, whether it be Tanner, which I mean, whatever, or Spencer, they're going to be completely different and closer to what you saw out of uh, the first two guys that you mentioned, I rather agree. than the latter. Yeah. Spencer, I think Spencer's probably a little bit more like Baker than he is the other two. I think that's probably accurate. I think that's probably accurate. I did think it was kind of interesting. I think but it got lost. Go ahead, Josh. No, what I would no, I was just gonna say. I think with Spencer, because of what happened at the end of his senior year, mm-hmm. he had to kind of shut it down. And I think everybody got this impression that he's kind of this kept to himself guy. And because he was such a big deal at such a young age, I think there is some hesitancy with some things he'll say publicly. Whereas Baker was like, I was you you know nobody ever cared about me. I'm gonna have fun with this. Um, I do think Spencer naturally is an outgoing kid. Like he's, he's well, there were people that commented on it. Comfortable talking. That had watched the the QB one thing. They're like, some people would come up to me. He's like, hey, is he is he kind of a douche? Like he just kind of had a rattler. Oh. Yeah, he had a personality where he not only had a big personality, but he also not that he picked on people, but it's just like with the backup quarterback, you could tell he he kind of. He knew he was better than people. Yeah, and, and Eddie, I know you had something you wanted to get to, but what I want, what I think is interesting, and it's something I don't think I really thought about a lot until we got into this kind of specific conversation. How did what he watched Jalen Hurts go through, especially with kind of his odd relationship with the receiver room? What was that like? Because you know he's close with Trajan Bridges and Theo Weiss, and probably to, even to a lesser degree Jaden Hazelwood and like, Stogner. Yeah, like he knows those guys well. He was part of that class for a long time, was a big part of helping those guys come in. Uh, you know, I'm sure had a big role in recruiting Hazelwood, all those kind of things. So that's really interesting to think about, like, because he kind of saw it from both sides. He's watching Jalen Hurts, but he knows what those guys think of Hurts and how maybe Jalen didn't nurture those relationships the way he could have. I think, in a way, it probably strengthened those relationships, don't you think? That that would be my I guess. I think there was a lot of... Uh, <laughs> I would imagine if we had Headington bugged, which we might. I'm not going to admit to it either way. But I would imagine there was a lot of late-night conversations in Headington that were basically... We this won't guy, have this I can't, problem. I can't wait for a year from now. We won't have this problem a let's, year from let's now. Focus on, let's focus on the future. And I know that that's not the most glowing uh, thing to say about it, the situation, but that's just kind of, I, I think that's probably the reality of the situation. Look, it's, Jalen Hurts was not, like, Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, they could do whatever they wanted to do. They made that team what they were. And there's, I mean, remember, Baker's defenses sucked. I mean, yeah. they were terrible. I mean, his, his defense in 2015 was probably his best defense. But yep. his his defenses it, that defense against Georgia was terrible. Kyler's defenses were terrible. Historically bad. If not for Baker and Kyler, though those teams don't make it to the 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 college football play. Kerry, I don't think those teams win the Big Twelve Championship. No, I think I, that's accurate. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean we're talking probably about teams that finished. I I don't want to say it in the Alamo Bowl, but I think there's a couple losses on those schedules on both teams. Well, it's just maddening because you look you look back at that 2017 roster for Oklahoma on offense. That should have been a national championship team. Like you look, I mean, <coughs> excuse me, Corona coming in. Oh no. Um, Orlando Brown, the offensive line. You got six offensive linemen that have been drafted from that group, um, or five. With six will be next year when Creed Humphrey gets his turn. Um, Two of which, including Humphrey, didn't even play really on that team. Uh, Marquise Brown, C.D. Lamb, uh, Rodney Anderson at running back. You've got Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray. I mean, that's just an insane amount of talent. That's true. So yeah, I, it, it'll be interesting. I mean, it, it's 
as we said, it's it's going to be the Spencer Rattler show whenever, if it ever comes to fruition. We, I mean, it's just going to be really interesting here over the next. Uh, I, I in the interim, I would say the next couple hours to see what kind of statement Oklahoma comes out with because, kind of as we open this, it's one of those things like if you aren't and you're just have your head down PJ Tour, you're going to look like idiots when this is all said and done, and not because everybody's going to be infected because you played, but because of the optics of the situation. Yeah. Well, it's been a confusing 24, 48 hours. It's, there's still a lot more to figure out as this whole thing works itself out. I don't even know that we really want to go into too many more details about it just because things are going to change so much. I mean, we'll see what happens with OU football and spring football. Like I said, by the time we post this, oh, you could already tweet out that it's all been canceled. Uh, I just think, I'm sure Lincoln Riley probably wants to give this as much time as possible to figure out exactly where it's going because, like I said, that, that spring game is such a huge recruiting weekend for them and they spent so much time. And put, but you know what? People put a lot of time and effort into a lot of things and they're not getting to play. So, as I said, it's, 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 it's really about doing what's right for now and you know get past this thing it's going to take some some things that people don't want to do i would just say just be inconvenienced for once just just deal with it and we'll all be better the, the end. people i really feel bad for are somebody like you know a, a christian doolittle or a lindy yeah, waters or yeah. a cam mcgriff that their college basketball careers are probably over as as strange as that is to say like i I don't something know something they had nothing to do with. Yeah, or or how about the the kid that I don't know if I can feel bad for kids that play athletics at Harvard. They're getting a pretty good education, but like <laughs> it just it, it's it's a very weird spot for these spring fo- for these spring sports that are now probably going to be facing a cancellation or at least a long term postponement. It'll be interesting also to see kind of what the waiver process is like for the NCAA because. I would think if OU cancels their spring game, they're going to try and get some type of waiver uh, to maybe get some extra practices here or there. Maybe start fall camp earlier. Maybe get, you know, a couple of weeks in the summer. Something like that. See, that, that's what I was wondering, Kerry. There's actually a policy here in Texas where if you elect not to do spring ball, you can start your fall workouts earlier. And I don't know if it's... You know, one for one. I don't. I don't know the exact ratio, but it is. You can just punt on your spring practices and start fall practice earlier. So, I mean, they're going to have to do something. There's no way all these teams. You know, as long as the world doesn't just crumble and football is not really that important, when they come back to this conversation in May or whenever that happens, they're they're going to have to come up with something. And all these schools are going to want it, and they're going to want to have that opportunity to make up for all this recruiting time. And I. Honestly, the people, you know, and this is, again, my perspective, I feel bad for these 2021 kids. They're having to go, like, their whole plan, a lot of these guys were wanting to be done by the first of summer. Well, that's sure. not even going to be remotely possible now. So, you know, like the Tunmiche Adelier kid was supposed to come to Oklahoma, you know, in the next month or two, was talking about, I'm, you know, and he's still saying, I'm going to make my decision on August 1st. I, I wouldn't hold yourself to that. I mean, yeah. that's going to be really hard to make that work if they can't get everything back online before, you know, before summer. Yeah. Add Penn State to the list of uh, programs that have uh, put their football activities on hold. But they haven't canceled their spring game or anything? I haven't seen anything like that yet. All right, uh, Josh, anything recruiting-wise you want to get out there before we uh, call it a day? Yeah, just a couple of quick things. Obviously, you know, before all this happened – Oklahoma had Kamar Wheaton uh, on campus oh, yeah. on Monday. Uh, th- I, that visit sounds like it re- went really well. I think the thing that I took away from my conversations with both him, uh, I think to this point we're the only people that have talked to him, and he, he was very quiet. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like it was a, a groundbreaking interview, but the thing I did take away from talking to him as well as some other sources was I think there's a good fit between his personality, which is very kind of laid back, kind of reserved, and that of DeMarco Murray. I, I think there's a good fit there. I think they kind of hit it off. 
uh, with you know just him watching him be around the players and you know going through some of the team meeting stuff that Wheaton got to see. The other is another Texas five star guy, and that's Bryce Foster, the Mountain. I don't know how much I can overstate the fact that the kid was sitting at home with his dad on a Monday uh, during his spring break, and they were just like, "Let's go up to Oklahoma." Man, I make that drive a lot. That's not a drive you just wake up and are going to do if that's not a school you're real serious about. I, It feels more and more like this is going to be an OU A&M thing, and I think OU's closing that gap slowly but surely. And if you're OU, you have to love, I mean, if there's any good news out of all this, you got the last real run at Caleb Williams, Kamar Wheaton, and Bryce Foster. I mean, that's – now, Kamar went and visited Texas the next day, but I mean – you got a last look from those guys before – God, it could be two months before those guys go to another college campus. Can I point out real quick how hilarious that picture is of Reuben Fothery, uh, Bryce Foster, and Cam Dewberry standing next to Cody Ford and Orlando Brown? If I told you Cody <laughs> and Orlando were 5'10", how could you disprove me? <laughs> like, they, ju- they all look normalized. It's all – I'm like – God, they're just all. I mean, if you told me Bryce Foster was the NFL offensive lineman in that group, fine. I, I'm not going to argue with you about it. Like, they, it's just five enormous. Cam Dewberry, the kid that's on the far right, for anybody that may pull this uh, the picture up and look at it, um, it's on my timeline. I, I you know, I, I've tweeted it out. It is. He's a 2022 kid. He's 15. It's standing insane. next to Orlando Brown and looks completely in his element. It's crazy. Is that twice in two months that Foster's been in Norman? Yes, because he was up. Um, I remember the picture of his brother picking him up. That yeah, he was up size. for the, the, uh, the March 1st. I mean, so he was here twice in like two weeks. And like I said, I when I saw him that weekend after that first visit, this was not part of the plan. They just were sitting around, and then he and his dad drove up the night before, stayed in Denton, and then finished off the drive the next day. And like I said, I mean, he, he came away loving it. I think they he really likes Bill Biedenboe. There's a real connection there. And with the way Bryce plays, I mean, you've got to figure that's that's 1A on, on Bill's list of, of linemen he wants. All right, gentlemen. It's been an interesting show. A lot still to come. Um, who knows? Maybe an emergency podcast here or there. That's my door dash. Oh, um, my like Qdoba is here. Uh, Eddie, you want to wrap it up? I can do that. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, we appreciate everybody for joining us. Josh, appreciate it. Stay safe. You are going to uh, get through this. We are going to give you much love and many prayers as you get over uh, what we can only expect is the worst. Have You You haven't allowed Linda back in the house, have you? Oh, Lin- Linda cleaned yesterday. Oh, we're, see? We're, yep. This is all starting to come together. So, For Kerry Murdoch, for Josh McQuish, and I'm Eddie Radosvich. This has been the unofficial 40.